Hey guys, Chris Dalsa here from The Last Checkpoint, bringing you the first video in our Unity 3D Beginner Series. Uh, this video will be where we go ahead and create a brand new game um, using just the game objects and the scripts that we're going to create. No game assets being imported. If you guys haven't already, I encourage you guys to check out, I think I'll call it episode zero of this series, which introduces what we're going to be doing in the series and shows off a little bit of the game that we'll be making. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm not gonna go through the steps of actually downloading Unity. I think you guys will probably figure out that part for yourselves. If not, there are some great tutorials out there for you guys to follow. I'm gonna jump right into a downloaded version I have. Um, once you do open it, you'll get a window that looks like this. Uh, I have a couple projects in here, so you'll see a couple projects if you're the same way. Uh, otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and click the new button. I'll name mine first game. We'll keep it at 3D. Um, this is my location. Yours may vary. And we'll go ahead and click create project. Now it'll do some behind the scenes stuff. And once it's ready, it'll reopen Unity. This might take a little bit. Uh, it'll reopen Unity in this default view. And this view uh, at, at first is a little overwhelming, but let me walk you through exactly what's going on. The top here is the toolbar, which are mostly tools for manipulating the game, game objects on the screen. And then right here in the center is to start, stop, and pause when you're playing the game through Unity. This middle section uh, holds the scene view where we'll be placing our game objects. Uh, it also holds the game tab so that when we do want to run our game and see how it looks. That's where it'll be. And there's also a tab for the asset store. The right panel is the inspector panel. This will give you all the details of the components on each of the game objects that you place within your game. We're going to be spending a lot of time in here and we'll go over slowly what each component is um, within game objects as we come across them. The left is the hierarchy view you'll see that the very top is the scene. Right now it's untitled. And within the scene, you'll see all the components within there. By default for scenes, uh, Unity gives you the camera and the directional lighting. And then at the very bottom, you have the project view where you can see both the console tab and the project view. And in the project view, is, this is where we'll be creating our folders under the assets folder and um, saving all of our scenes, our materials, our prefabs, all of that down here for reusability sake, including our scripts. So uh, that's just a high level view of, of each of the windows, each of the sections. Um, we'll use all of them extensively. Um, I just want to give you a quick overview of them. So before we move on, I do want to share with you that even though these are the preset windows, Unity is meant to be moved around for your purposes, especially if you have multiple monitors. As you can see, each tab can be dragged and dropped across wherever you want to put it, however you want to work. Um, it's all up to you, it's all a matter of preference. You can even pull tabs out of Unity. It's not doing a good job showing me there, but there we go. You can pull it out of Unity onto different windows and um, makes it super powerful that way. So um, I'm going to go ahead and go back to default. If you ever mess this up, you can go on this drop down to the top right, click default, and voila, we're back to normal. But if for some reason, more often than not, you seem to like how you've set up your interface, you can click this again and click save layout. Now for the purposes of our demo, I'm going to go ahead and use the default I created called Dallas A default. I'll click it. And you can see there's only a couple changes here, but just for demo purposes, this is a great layout uh, for this, this tutorial. Um, I drag the game tab down here, so that it's just under the scene so I can see them simultaneously. And then I move the project window to the left, just under the hierarchy window, so that the project and the console tabs are just under here. One more thing I did was there's a collapsible drop down right here. It's defaulted to two, two column layout. I switched it to one. Uh, it's again a matter of preference. The two column layout shows the hierarchy in a folder structure but shows the objects within the folder in a separate window whereas the one column layout shows all 
of the objects and folders in one project view. And you'll see the differences between mine and yours. It's not that big of a difference, but just a heads up, if you're wondering why yours looks a little different from mine, this is why. So I wanna go ahead and get started with making our game. Um, I know that's why we're all here. So let's go ahead and create our first game object. So up here, we have our regular menu set. We're gonna create a game object by clicking the game object menu item up here. Go down to 3D object, and the first thing we'll create is a cube. Now there are a few things to note here that I'm doing. Um, you can see that as I click around, the cursor is changing. Um, actually, that's because I'm using different buttons to do different functions. So the first thing you notice is the scroll. So I'm using the mouse wheel to scroll in and out. And then to pan around with the hand, I'm clicking the mouse wheel to pan around. Let's go in closer, pan around. And then to actually move our view of the cube itself or what we're viewing, I click and hold the right click. And I move around like that. And to move, move ourselves around, kind of in the same vein, but ourselves instead, uh, or the world instead of ourselves, I should say, you hold the alt key and left click around. So those are just a few of the viewing hotkeys that you'll be using throughout the tutorial. They'll come in handy, so I suggest playing around with them, making sure they become second nature to you. So a couple things I want to point out while we have our cube selected. Uh, we were talking about the inspector panel earlier. This is the inspector panel. We have our different components. We won't go into some of these uh, right away, but over time we will. Right now I kind of want to point our attention to the transform. The transform, as you might have guessed, uh, sets the position, rotation, and scale of our particular object. So we can see the position is in this X, Y, and Z axis. For best practices purposes, it's always best to start our object in the at the origin, which is zero, zero, zero. So that we have a good frame of reference of how the object's gonna look as a whole from the point origin. It'll just make measurements easier and scaling easier and all that, especially for our first project. So we'll go ahead and start in our position at the origin. And you can see as I hover over the letters in position, there are arrows on the left and right of our arrow. That just means we can hold the left click and go right and go left to change the position. Or we can just go into the field and input it ourselves. Now, one more thing I want to show you guys for position and rotation and scale, actually, for all three of them. Um, if we decide to move our position and we're too lazy to put all zeros, um, we can go ahead and hit the gear and go reset. And that's just a quick way of putting our position back at all zeros. So um, that's that. Quickly, let's go over the toolbar tools up here in the top left. The, the cross arrows are is the move tool, which allows us to move either along the axes or along the plane. Our object, you can see that I'm grabbing the arrow. It'll keep it on the axis, whereas if I grab the plane, it'll hold it on the plane. We also have the rotate tool where we can rotate again on our axes by grabbing the various axes within the circle of the object here. And we have our scaling tool that'll scale along the axes that I pull. And as I'm doing this, guys, you can see that in the transform, it's transforming here. So anything I'm doing here can be just as well done over here. It's just a matter of how you want to work. And sometimes um, one or the other works a lot better. So the last manipulation tool is the rectangular transform. Um, just a really high level view of it. We won't be using a lot in this tutorial, but just so you know, it exists. Uh, it's here so that you can transform your objects in a rectangular view from wherever you're viewing. Uh, so we'll go ahead and hit the gear and we'll hit reset. Reset our object back to the zero position, zero rotation, and scale of one. 
Um, I think this cube will be a really good start to a platform. The very first platform that we'll create for our game. So let's go ahead to rename our objects. You can either hover over the object in the hierarchy view, hover over it and click on the name just once and it'll change to be able to rename the object. The other way is to come over while it's selected, the inspector view, you'll see its name at the very top and we can rename it. Let's call it platform, enter, and it's changed in both areas. But right now it's not really a platform, right? It's just a cube. So let's go ahead and make it more platform like. And let's go ahead and do that by messing with the scale. So we already saw with the scale tool that it can scale in the X, Y, and Z axes. For our purposes, for to be a platform, let's make it scale in both the X and Z axes. And maybe let's leave the Y alone, right? So let's go ahead and reset it. Let's make the X scale 10, leave Y at one, and let's go Z scale also 10. So now we have a pretty cool looking platform here, right? At least a start for how our game should look. And I think I think that right there looks pretty pretty solid. Let's go ahead and actually save our scene. Because right now we have an untitled scene with a solid game object right in the middle of it, and we don't want to lose our progress. So this is a good opportunity to show you guys how to save our assets. So down here in the project folder. We're going to go ahead and hit the drop down create folder. And the folder for this one we're going to call scenes, but we're going to call it underscore scenes. And the underscore just denotes that this folder should come on top of the other folders. It's in alphabetical order. So now that we have our scenes folder, let's go ahead and save our, our scene. Save scene as. Go into our scenes folder and we'll go ahead and name it main. Now when I expand the scenes folder, we can see that this main scene is now saved down here. Great. So now we have our scene, we have our platform. Let's go ahead and introduce our player to the game. So our player is just going to be a sphere in this at, at this point um, that we're going to move around with the either the arrow keys or the WASD keys, whichever you prefer. So let's go ahead and set that up. Go to game object, 3D object, sphere. Now we see that a ball has appeared. In our game, just using the move tools to move it around. And you can see because of the directional light, it has a little bit of a shadow. Changes around as we move the ball around. Let's go ahead and put this at the origin. Remember the gear reset does that for us. And now you can see the ball has kind of disappeared into the platform. Why is that? Well, you remember that we put the platform at the origin, zero, zero, zero. And so the ball and the platform are in the exact same spot and we don't really want that. We want our ball to be, we want our ball or our player for that matter to rest right on the platform. And you can see that's about right, but because we did it freehand, it's never going to be perfect, right? You can see that there's a little bit of space in between. So we can see in our transform that the Y axis is Y 0 0.9. It's that 0 0.9. That's the difference here. We know that the platform is exactly one in height. And so we'll go ahead and set the ball exactly one in height. So it just sits on the platform and that's great. That looks great. Once again, let's go ahead and name our object. Let's call this player since this is going to be the player object Hit enter control S to save our scene. And there you have it. You have our platform and our player. So just before we finish this video, I wanted to squeeze in, um, the idea of materials into this video. As you can see, our scene is just beginning, but it's a little bland. Both are both of our objects, even though they're only two, are both white and they don't really have anything unique about them. So so we're gonna go ahead and use material um, or the idea of the material to give these objects colors. So let's go back to our project. Hit create a new folder called materials. And within our materials, go ahead, right click, create material. And let's start our material creation uh, naming convention, right? 
let's go ahead and create the first one for platform. So let's say platform underscore mat for material. Now that we've created our material, you can see in the inspector tool, we have our main maps, which will give us different options of how the materials color, the smoothness, the metallic are all gonna be affected. And then you have some more uh, secondary maps and more details down here, but we're gonna stay up here for at least this tutorial. And we're gonna go ahead and use the albedo, which gives us our RGB and transparency. So you can see the color comes exactly from here. We'll go ahead and click it. And once you do, it'll bring up a color swatch. So let's go ahead and give our platform a dark, a deep dark purple. I think will be a good color. You can see on the bottom right, for you, it might be in a little different area depending on where your inspector is. But on the bottom of the inspector, you'll get a preview view of how the color looks. So I think that looks good. We'll go ahead and take the material and drag it onto our platform, like so. And you can see that the platform now has taken the color of the material. And of course, I can change the color of the material itself, and not just the platform, and it'll inherit that material color. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for, uh, for the player. Right click on materials, create material. Let's go ahead and name it player, Matt. Let's go ahead and give it a color of yellow. So it contrasts a bit from the platform. Go ahead and do that. We'll assign that to the player. And there you go. We have a pretty uniquely looking player here in relation to the contrasting purple platform that it sits up on. And we have the start to our very first game, guys. I think I'll go ahead and leave the tutorial at that. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, please give the channel a follow. Uh, leave a thumbs up at the bottom of this video. Uh, please let us know what you think in the comments. I think for the next video in the series, we'll go ahead and give the player a little bit of life. Um, going into the scripting portion of our tutorial and allowing the player to control the player with the directional buttons um, or the WASD keys and begin our journey into actually implementing control for our player here. Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching once again, and we'll see you in the next video.